<laughs> yeah, so how's it going, brother? <laughs> Ray Goss, it's going well. Thanks, my boy. How about you, buddy? Yeah, super good, my man. Thanks so much. And geez, we had such a great chat last week with Christopher Maher that we, we just think it's such great timing. And a little bit more about Christopher uh, before we get on, just as a reminder. Uh, Christopher is an absolute healer, a wizard, an enigma, and he's an ex-Navy SEAL who's become an absolute healer in his or specialist in helping others release tension and stress from their bodies and we just feel like this conversation was such good timing hey Gareth it's like the world is in a crazy place we've been through so many of these initiations and tough times and it's almost like we could all do with a bit of healing right now ourselves and as a collective and you know I feel like people like Christopher they are on the right track because when we start to heal ourselves in as individuals and as families and as co smaller communities, we all start to influence each other on a bigger scale. And that's where we kind of want to go. Hey, Yeah, for sure, Craig. And, you know, I think in these times where we've had to deal with a hell of a lot in 2020 as a human population, uh, lots of people are operating with a very high level of anxiety and it's causing a lot of stress and a lot of sadness and a lot of confrontation and fear and all these things. And I think if we can all maybe understand more about ourselves, have a high level of consciousness and understand how we show up in life every single day, then we can really make this a better place. And I mean that like, you know, truly like we have to all do our best to show up as well as we can. Um, and, you know, we learned so much from, from Chris and we have a lot of that to share with you in this super, superhumanship episode today. And uh, I mean, the first thing that he, he basically spoke about was co-creation. Hey, Craig. Yeah, exactly, Gareth. And, and that's exactly what it's all about. Are we co-creating with everything, as you said? And it's kind of obvious on one hand, isn't it? But when you really drill it down, we, we, everything that we do is a co-creation. We don't exist on our own entirely. If we brush our teeth, there's a co-creation there. There's, you know, if we chat with someone else, there's a co-creation of the energy of the conversation or whatever. So when we start to get out of our own ways and just trust that, that what, you know, the work we're doing on ourselves is getting us to a better place. That's when we really start to, uh, and when I say get out of our ways, it's like the strong ego driven way, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's sometimes not the right way in the world. And, you know, when we are reacting to others, um, we often are triggered by something that's inside of us. There's something that's unresolved within us. And if something is triggering us, not always, but oftentimes, you know, if there's a trigger there, it's not a bad idea to think, okay, why is that triggering me? Is there something that I've been through in my past or is there something that I haven't really dealt with? And sometimes these little triggers are, according to Christopher, really great cues to lean into that and say, okay, well, what is that? And, and let's become curious about why that is. And if we lean into these things, we can actually figure them out and kind of get rid of them in our bodies. And we have then fewer triggers in our body that, are, that we become reactive to and our life becomes, our life becomes a little bit smoother, doesn't it? Yeah, it does for sure, Craig. And, and one of the things that he said was, was the, the hint that the limitation uh, is in the resistance. And... That's so true. If we, if we all kind of look at ourselves, you know, we, we have resistance to certain things, to certain situations, to whatever. And that is what is limiting us from probably being the, the best that we can do, especially in each situation. And he said another thing, which I thought was also rather profound around consciousness and that consciousness is the new gold. And he actually said this like 25 years ago. And, and it's so true. It's, it's, something you hear more and more about these days is that, you know, the more conscious we can be about how we are, about how mindful we are in, in situations, um, the, the, the better this whole 
world will be that because the better we are means we we react better we behave better and something to to just go a little bit deep on with what you said was like everything is an exchange of energy that we do you know whatever you do if you go into a situation like you and i are having a, a conversation now here on the podcast we're talking we're kind of you know uh talking back and forth and that's an exchange of energy you know i'm moving my hand now that's an exchange mm -hmm. of energy and we do this in every single interaction we have even if you're just sitting at your table eating dinner you're having an exchange of energy with the food you're eating by how you're chewing with your plate with your knife with your fork everything is is just an exchange of energy if we if we kind of look at it in a on a sort of deeper level like that and when it comes to big situations or, or like big group situations it's really important to always try and bring your best energy i think to each situation and there's a good reason for that and that is because all ner all nervous systems in the collective field vibrate to the highest functioning nervous system and you can actually notice that when you're in a group situation you'll be like you know say you're in a group and like all of a sudden someone walks in and they just you know they have a presence about them they have like a high energy and all of a sudden you just feel good you know like the, the energy levels are lifted up and this is because they're a high vibing sort of person and then everyone kind of like steps up to the plate to them so if we can you know do our best to show up with a good high energy into each situation then that is really going to make all our interactions a hell of a lot more profound and valuable hey craig yeah super well said there gareth and and so true you know um how we show up influences people okay we we, we get that we understand that but and, and also um there's a there's another layer there as well it's like we are either influencing someone in a positive or a negative way there isn't really an in-between you know if you really think about it you know you're either coming in with this lower energy and you're like ah oh, you know got that attitude that is perceived by others you know or you can come in the opposite and you can and and so that's a choice we get to make these choices um and we have to show up in the right state but that also takes a bit of work it's, it's it is also more than just a choice sometimes we have to remember that our own bodies you know through what we put them through our lifestyle factors you know sleep and and food and uh you know self talk all these things we also find ourselves in a state that's either uh in a state of receiving or or a defensive state protective sort of a state um and the, the our bodies don't switch well somewhere in between it's like either the the switch is flipped to the one or the other fight or flight or rest and digest you know there's it's one or the other and so we have to make the choices in our day-to-day -day lives to try and find out how do we get more into the receptive mode and away from the defensive mode because as soon as you're in the defensive mode you know we we're not listening as well we more we more reactive we uh we produce um chemicals that are related to fight or flight in our bodies which age us basically um and you know these are all negative things that we don't really want so how do we find that that uh, receive receptive present state and you know it, it comes down to us creating value in the world so what are the ways to get into a more receptive state you know and, and that's really the question how do we how do we do that and i one of the ways is to sort of dive into your patterning you know what are the what are the reasons that i and i mentioned this a little bit earlier like what are the reasons that my ego is so big around this specific topic you know or um understanding that we are affected by the choices we make with food and and alcohol and all these other things um and also old traumas that we've been through you know um sometimes something that's really insignificant as a child that could really affected you then in that in that young nervous system becomes your habit becomes the way you respond later on and we don't even realize so these are little things that we should go back and think about these little traumas when that kid teased you about your the way you said something at school like that might have actually been quite hurtful you as an adult you think oh that's you know that's kind of silly it's just a kid but you at 
at that stage as a child that might have actually been a trauma. And uh, so these are little things that we can all delve into to try and find, uh, you know, uh, what are these things affecting us here? For sure, Craig. And I think what defines if we are in a receptive or protective kind of state is, is basically it comes to that how much I love myself sort of scenario again. You know, like, do I really, am I really starting off from the right place with everything that I'm doing? And one of the great ways to, to know that is like, do I love myself? You know, if the answer is yes, then that's good. You're starting off from a more receptive state, right? If the answer is no, then you're more likely to be starting off from a protective state. And we all have so much work to do. That's for sure. That's very obvious. Mm. And some of us have are further down the road than others. And it doesn't matter really where you are. Like you can always start. And, and that's an important mm. thing to, to try and get into that receptive state. And we asked Christopher, what are two practical pieces of advice for self-love? And he gave us two and the first one was removing toxic substances from your diet. And he said, you don't have to do it quickly. You can do it over six months or, or longer if you want. Uh, do a little bit each day and then ultimately have less of these things. And those substances were things like sugar, right? The, the sort of refined sugar that we buy and we put in our tea or coffee, those sort of things and our chocolates and our cakes that we bake. Um, caffeine, alcohol, nicotine, and then things that might not be as obvious, but things like food colorings and preservatives that are actually in a hell of a lot of our food. So that basically means cooking yourself a lot of the time. Um, and then of course, recreational drugs as well. So removing those is going to allow us to get into a more receptive state because it's going to have a big impact on our central nervous system. And we're going to be able to do things that are more in alignment uh, with how we are meant to be, right? And the second one, which I thought was fascinating, was to have a psychic conversation with the top 10 people that you've been dishonest with in your life. And for me, this was really interesting. And what he said was like, take a piece of paper and write down the list of the top 10 people that you might have been dishonest with in your life. And speak to them psychically. So you can just say whatever you want out into the universe. And, you know, I don't know what it is, whatever you want to speak to them about, say you want to ask for forgiveness, or you actually want to tell them that you lied to them, or whatever the story is, have that conversation, almost like just get it off your chest, you know, and then he also said that, like, people pick up what you, what you say, you know what I mean? There's, there's amazing things in the universe that sort of connect us. And perhaps that's one way for them to kind of know that, okay, cool, you know, or to feel, okay, yeah, something's going on here. I can, you know, I can feel that, that something's changed and, and, and it changes on both sides. So those were two really great pieces of advice for uh, improving and practicing self-love. Um, hey, Craig. Yeah, totally, Gareth. And, and, you know, <laughs> Christopher actually spoke about something there as well, which, which resonated as well with me. Is like sometimes you'll think of someone and then you're like, oh, uh, you know, I wonder how, you know, Johnny's doing. And then, and then Johnny will contact you, you know, <laughs> and how often has that happened? Uh, where you've just thought about someone and then they'll show up in your life somewhere, you know. And uh, so there are these weird sort of connections and, and synchronicities and energetics that we don't always get. And I think talking to people's higher self uh, is a is a really uh, valuable way for uh, yourself and for them, as you said. So yeah, really, really cool tips from him. And, you know, it comes down to to honesty, you know, Christopher had a lot to say about honesty and authenticity and, um, and basically how much they are linked to our, our physical health, you know, um, and, uh, and our mindset. And he spoke about having, you know, these, these two primary versions of, of honesty, um, one being inner and then the other being outer honesty. Uh, and, and he basically says, you know, some people are really good at being honest with others, 
for other people, but they are terrible um, at sort of being honest with themselves. And, um, and then he also says other people are really honest with themselves, um, but they find it very difficult to be honest with someone else, you know? So I guess what that means is when, when I'm honest with you, I'm allowing you in on how I feel about you. And when I'm honest with myself, I'm allowing myself in on how I feel about you. And this, you know, Gareth and I just kind of go back and forth on this a little bit because it's, it's, it's quite deep when you think about it. You know, are we, are we really being honest with ourselves about how I feel about someone else? Um, and because there's ramifications there sometimes, um, for example, if, you know, if someone's bad at letting themselves in on how they really feel about someone else, um, they, there's, the, the ramification could be that if that they were really honest, the nature of that relationship could change. Um, and, you know, that, that, that is a scary outcome. So therefore we often are not honest about it. Um, and yeah, sometimes that might lead to a sort of a very uncomfortable conversation. Hey Gareth. Yeah, for sure, Craig. And I think we can all relate to that, you know, like we all know that in certain situations or relationships, we're probably not being 100% honest, M maybe not in its entirety, but certain elements, you know, there'll be like a tough conversation that you need to have and you know you need to have it, but you don't have it because you're not being honest, right? And that is not good because that is, that is once again, that's upsetting your kind of balance in, in how you show up as a person. And, and it's something that if, if you don't actually deal with being honest and having that difficult conversation, you're gonna, that's something that's gonna build up inside of you, you know, eventually. And when, when too many of these things build up, that's when people flip and explode. And, and that's why, you know, these different versions of inner honesty and outer honesty are really, really important to be conscious of um, because they are upsetting, you know, ourselves internally. And um, ultimately that, that then impacts all your relationships and, and how people perceive you. And mm. so it's amazing that these two things are, are like tied together. And as you become really good at these two things you know like you basically you, your your needs start getting met you know and and you you start feeling more valuable i feel like mm. if you if you're able to be you know truly honest and when you are totally honest and start feeling valuable it also helps then improve your confidence and you start to understand that you actually have value to offer in the world and you know all these things are just really, really powerful things and behaviors that we can all relate to. We all know we should be doing, but sometimes mm. there's something there that kind of stops us from doing them, but nothing happens easily in life. And if we really want to, if we really want to get far, we want to be operating at our best possible selves for ourselves and for the collective, then we need to, we need to face these, these kind of little dark parts of us, I think, mm. you know, and it's really, really, interesting and we all know that that we have these elements to us and but then i guess when well, what christopher is a massive believer in is that everything comes down to love and to presence doesn't it greg totally gareth and it's it's really deep you know we we often hear self-love and love makes the world go around and things and you know i know for Gareth and I, we, we've been along this journey that this is something that is actually becoming more and more apparent. You know, it's, <laughs> I guess you start to really connect with that idea more. And, you know, we, we often hear people talking about being present uh, and presence being an important value to have or an important skill to have sometimes, you know, and it might be, it might seem like a bit of a nebulous idea, but the, the, the truth is that, um, if we want to show up in the world and have a bit more impact in the world and influence and peace and joy in our lives, you know, I feel like these are things we're all kind of striving towards in some way, shape or form, um, as well as connections, you know, having a deeper connection with others and ourselves and our families and things like that. Um, we actually need to be in a, a real deep state of presence. And through that presence, 
we are increasing that receptiveness, which we spoke about, you know, uh, exponentially. And as a result of that, you, your value as a human being increases. Um, and so putting in all this effort, you know, in terms of working on honesty and the, 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 the vessel that we're in and all these things we've just discussed, um, ultimately leads back to you just being a person of value in the world. And, you know, the time that we hear is, is, is pretty fleeting. So it, it feels like the right thing to be doing, you know, in the world uh, to be putting in that effort. And, um, you know, and as a result of, you know, the work that you're doing or the opposite, you know, not putting in the work, it's important just to remember that that energy f- flowing through us, right? It's flowing through a filter of the tension and the stresses within you as a, in your mind and in your body physically. And, the more work you do on these things, the, you know, the filter then changes. And the way people perceive you is through that lens of the tension of your life, that stuff that's unresolved. Uh, and so your, the stuff you're putting out into the world becomes very apparent through those filters. And that's another reason why it's, it's a really great idea to be working on these things. Hey, Gareth. Yeah, for sure, Craig. And I guess if we have to finish it off there was this amazing quote that i read the other day or i heard and as soon as i heard it i was like it's so true you know what i mean and and we can totally probably all relate to it and that quote is your energy speaks before you do and i guess what that means is like if you walk into a situation be it with a big group of people or one on one with somebody you can almost immediately feel like how that person is. You can go, Oh, you know, (laughs) this is going to be a tricky situation (laughs) or they come with a big smile. They give you a big hug and they are very cheerful and upbeat straight away. The energy speaks before you do. And it's such a true thing. So Mm. think about that when you, go into meetings or situations or whatever the story is in this day and age and ask yourself how you're showing up and what sort of energy you're bringing. So until then, we hope you guys have an amazing week. And next week we have a truly exceptional podcast coming up with a guy we've been wanting to get on for ages and we grew up knowing so much about his uncle but now he is such a profound man himself and his name is boyd varty hey craig geez gareth (laughs) we we you know these conversations are just teaching us so much and yeah our next week we're chatting with boyd varty and he is a tracker he is a man who's lived in the bush around the bush his whole life growing up he's a fourth generation sort of safari business owner and he has lived around people who have understood nature way deeper than any of us or most of us have experienced and now he's starting to share some of that wisdom of the African safari spirit and nature and guiding and these kinds of things with us so be sure to listen in next week for that one and in the meantime Have yourselves an amazing week and just thanks so much for joining us today. Cheers, guys. Waking at dawn, packing the gear.